Hey there, you know what time it is. Time for batteries. Let's look at what we have in the bench today. All right, car modules. This one right here comes from Made in Poland. These are Jaguar batteries, LG. It's got those identifiers in there. I've done some research on these and it looks to be a 3S module, which is weird, I know. Which means it's gonna be really big too. Like a lot of ampers, a lot of amp hours, right? So the cool thing about this, that it's sealed. You can, it's welded. You see these? These are welded. And so the only thing that's exposed here are the two terminals, the plus and the minus here. So that's pretty cool. These probably are safe. They're not gonna catch fire when they, they do. Well, they're encased in this uh, thing. Hopefully they have uh, some way of venting <laughs> so that it doesn't blow up. So that's cool. You, there's no way that you can mess with these and damage them, right? The bad thing is that, well, if one of these cells gets damaged, well, then you can't refix it. It's the whole module or nothing. But the other cool thing is that we also have the connectors. I think we have a connector for every one module. We got a pallet of this one in today, and we're getting another pallet later today. So they're gonna have about almost 300 of these modules available. Um, and so what I've done is I charged it all the way through. Now we're going to discharge it up. Yeah, and by the way, I figure out the pinout here. Uh, there are mirror, there are two kinds of these modules. I guess they would mirror, so one is the, the white connector, the other one is the black connector. But this one right here, the white connector is the one that works. Boom, three cells, there should only be like four cables that are actually usable. The other ones are probably temperature sensors. So they're identified by this little thing, right? So you'll be able to see what they are. So according to this thing right now, they're sitting at 4.14 and I've had it this for like a week there. I charged it and then I let it sit just to see if that's always a good practice to do is just to charge it and then let a battery sit there. And then if there's faulty, then it's going to lose some voltage. But if it's good, then it's, it's going to stay right where it's at. So let me connect this into an inverter, a 12 volt inverter, and then, then we can see how much power we can get out. It's not going to be the full capacity, obviously, because this is 3S and 3S is just a bit too low. It's 12.6 volts nominal, right? So there's definitely going to be some... That's the problem with lithium ion batteries. They don't make great 12 volt, right? 3S is too low, 4S is too high. So it's somewhere in between. And that is the thing why we always never, well, suggest or recommend using lithium ion or lithium cobalt oxide or NMC chemistries. The 3.7 volt chemistries are, we usually don't recommend using. If you need to use the entire capacity of the battery. For audio applications, I have learned that a lot of people are using it because they don't actually need the capacity, they more need the power output. And I would probably guess that these batteries are very, very powerful. The only problem is that they're gonna be too low voltage for audio applications. So these probably are not gonna work for, for audio applications. Although I might be proven wrong, I don't know. So maybe these are gonna be great if they have the energy density, high energy density, maybe it's somewhere above 200 watt hours per kilogram, then these are gonna be great for electric car conversions because they have a high energy density, right? And the power density to also push quite a bit of amps and stuff. Let's test it and let's see how much we can get with a 12 volt device. Uh, maybe I'll do a separate test where we actually try to get the actual capacity in here. All right, so we have the test set up here. This is the battery. It's connected through this meter to a 12 volt inverter that is going to a heater, right? So. Uh, this uh, is gonna record that in there and let's start this test. Here we go, what are we, what are we seeing? 130 amps, 150 amps. Out of the 400 amps, I don't know at all what this battery is, so that's why I put 400 amp hours. So we'll see at what point does this quit and then we'll know how much we use, right? We subtract it from 400. Okay, this following test here took forever. This is over two hours and so, the phone ran out of battery uh, and then I couldn't really uh, export the video. So all I did here, what you're watching is you're looking at um, still images, right? So every 10 minutes. And so you could see that we started with 400 amp hours. We're at 297 right now. And then somewhere around here, the load quit. Uh, 
and you see there's only 3.25, 3.6 amps. That's because the timer on the load quit. So then I restarted it and then here we are to use the different camera. And here we are, here's the final number, 204 out of total of 400. So about 200 amp hours you're able to remove using just a regular 12 volt uh, inverter. All right, after further investigation, these modules turn out to be 2.6 kilowatt hours or 236 amp hours. So, but just regular inverters, 12 volt inverters that you can buy off the shelf and stuff, nothing special, that nothing that's like high end that you can adjust the voltage. If you can use 200 amp hours, that is equivalent to 84%, which is not bad, right? That is exactly what you want to do if you want this battery to last a long time. So you can install this in the wall, install a regular 12 volt equipment, and it'll use it up to it reaches around 80% or something like that, probably because the, the last 4% is where the alarm starts going and you would probably drive you nuts. Uh, but here's the crazy thing. If you get Victron, on the Victrons, you can set the low voltage cutoff as low as 9.3 volts, for example, on a 12 volt, which would put your cells around 3.1 volts. It's, again, perfect voltage, low voltage cutoff for these cells, right? And the 24 is the same thing, 18, 0.6 volt minimum uh, cutoff voltage, right? Which if you do the math, right? And the way you would do that is you would use two of these modules in series. So that's six cells. And that would put your cells exactly at 3.1 volts. And it's the same thing with the 48. The minimum cutoff uh, voltage is 37.2. Also putting your cells at 3.1 volt was perfect low voltage cutoff. All right, next, BMS. Now, luckily our supplier is giving us these modules with the wiring harness. So we have the connectors, but in case you were missing one or in case we didn't, we don't have them or whatever, uh, or they're damaged for any reason, uh, we have the technical data here. The mating connector is TE1746872-1, and that is available at Mauser. So here is what the connector looks like, and here is the wiring diagram. I know it says right there, it shows you the pins, but it's kind of weird to see. So here's in graphical form. I went and traced it all out and this is how you connect cell number one, cell number two, cell number three. That is the wiring. And then those two are the temp over here. The one and two and, and 12 and 11 pins are two temperature sensors. Now some of the connectors only have uh, connections for the one uh, temperature sensor, right? So in case you wanted to add a, the second one, then you would have to get the terminals, which are also listed here in this document, TE 167-4311-2. All right, so the last thing for me to show you is how easy these mount in the wall. Right, with over 200 watt hours per kilogram, this is one of the lightest and smallest 20 kilowatt hours that I've ever seen, right? So this is this is crazy small power wall. Here are all the positives, and then here are all the negatives. I have gotten myself some hardware here, and then I made myself some bus bars. I'm gonna install them, then I'll show them to you. All right, so we've installed these uh, standoffs there so we can move the plane up because I've made these bus bars here out of aluminum, right? And so that's how you can connect them. Uh, but before we connect the positive, we, we did the positive now to connect the negative, it would mean that we we're gonna connect all of these in parallel. So before you do that, it's a really good idea to check to see modules are all the same voltage. And the way we're going to do that is by this little dongle that I made here. I just used just a regular connector here that comes with the thing. And then I just put it onto this little guy in here. If all the voltages are matching, then we can connect them all in parallel here. 10 10.27, 10 10.26, 10.26, 10.26, 10.26, 10.26, 10.26. These are all perfect. All right, so here we go. Now these are connected. These are all in parallel. This is one giant 
10 kilowatt hour 12 volt battery and then this is another one now if i wanted to run 24 volts all i have to do is connect uh this one the negative to the positive and now this is my main pot negative and my main positive and now it's 24 volts and you have 20 kilowatt hour uh battery pack right here now if you wanted to do 48 uh you can add two more of these in here and then just connect them like that uh also you could just take uh break these into smaller uh parallel packs right so connect two in parallel and then connect the other two in parallel then connect those in series you could flip these around or you can run a cable from here to there and now this is your positive and this is your negative and then you can jump over down here there's all kinds of ways these are like legos right and so these bus bars here that i made i made them so you can connect at the at, at the minimum you can connect two of these modules because then it allows you to do all that to configure however you're going to want to do right but for 12 volts you can use single like this in parallel uh for 24 you use two uh i guess you could run this at 36 too but nobody's going to want to do that but 48 you would run four groups of uh i mean either four in series or four groups of these in series and you can go as big as you want right so because I order a bunch of these and I don't really need them, if you buy these, I'll include two of these uh, with every module that you that we sell here, right? So there you go. That's just to make it a little bit easier. Also, they will come with the connector uh, and the connector, you can use it. Again, I showed you earlier how to connect that in there and maybe later because these will i will probably be getting more of these i will show you how to do the full bms connection on these guys so there you go the smallest lightest and one really powerful uh diy power wall all right i want to thank you for watching this video if you're interested in this they're going to be at jack35.com they're very very affordable a hundred dollars kilowatt hour trying to help as many people get their battery sorted out so for everything you saw in this video i will try to put the links in the description keep an eye out for the and if it's not there just comment down below and then i'll do my best to try and find the stuff and then link it in there right okay thank you for watching we'll see you guys in the next one bye